The more you put yourself out there, the more at risk you are of being disliked. Greatness cannot be birthed from a mediocre life. And success only arrives when you fail to please everybody. Instead of fighting for approval from those determined to misunderstand you, seek to connect with the few that gain from your presence here. You might think there are none. Well, maybe there aren't that you can see, which only means you best keep looking. It takes time and patience to cultivate your tribe, and it takes even more to cultivate compassion and live in the knowing that you are disliked by many, and many more will come, and that's perfectly okay. The reason that people don't like you is because you're annoying. And I don't want you to take that the wrong way. The truth is we're all annoying to somebody. I am annoying to people watching this right now that are about to click off. And then to the rest of you that are still here, hey, maybe I'm not so annoying for you, or maybe you actually like me. But the thing is, there is a bunch of people that have already clicked off because they don't like me. There's not much I can do about that. That's because we all have different tastes, different traumas, different preferences, different ideas about what this video should have contained or not contained. And based on all of those things, we decide whether or not we enjoy something, whether or not we like something. So when we look at it that way, if someone doesn't like you, it's not even that they dislike you. It's just they didn't get the desired experience that they wanted from you. But then simultaneously, some people are still here. You're still here. So if you're still here, it's because you do be getting the desired experience out of watching this. And so it's possible that regardless of who you are and how you are, you can have people both disliking you and liking you at the same time. In a sense, somebody disliking you is really a self-centered reaction, which is fine. Like you didn't give them what they wanted out of life. And so they've left and gone somewhere else to find what they hopefully want in life. It might be a hard fact to deal with, but a lot of people wake up and in the morning, they just are looking for people to disagree with. They're looking for situations, circumstances to project their pain onto. There's not really much that you can do about it on a broad scheme. In a narrow scheme, you could make sure you tick all of the boxes for that person, but then you're gonna be annoying somebody else at the same time. No matter what emojis or letters or flags or virtue signals that you put in your Instagram bio or on your dating profile or whatever, if you're pleasing someone, you're gonna be pissing off somebody else. In supporting one ideology, you're gonna be pushing another up against the wall and that's where we have the whole conflict, dislike, like, preference, whatever. We all know that statement, it's something like, I don't know the key, to success, but I know the key to failure is trying to please everybody. If you try to please everybody, you're doomed. You are literally doomed. It's a lot more sustainable and realistic and enjoyable to please some people. And ideally you're pleasing them, not from a place of, oh, I wanna please you, but you're just being yourself and you're having your values and your virtues. Then that just aligns you with other people. And hopefully you have more things in common and that's how you cultivate friendships and community and all that good stuff. And there will be communities and friendships and people that hate your friends and your community and you. And that's just life. I think ultimately whether we like or dislike something comes down to our understanding of the thing. If we dislike it, it's usually a reaction based on our lack of understanding. It's a lot easier to look at something we don't like and say, oh, that's stupid, you're on the wrong side. Because to actually understand and cultivate compassion could take a long time. Like you're rewiring your brain to remove these instincts and these beliefs and reactions and assumptions and all of these things that we have towards everything that's happening in the world. And it's all based on our conditioning and the things that were implanted in us as we were growing up. I do believe that if we all cultivated compassion, we wouldn't have likes or dislikes anymore because we would actually understand the nature of everything and why everything is being perceived as it is and why things are enjoyed by some people and why other things are not enjoyed by other people. If you have certain beliefs around money and you look at somebody, like for a long time, I had the belief I couldn't earn more than minimum wage. It was just unfathomable to me. And I would look at people earning more and I would get angry and jealous. Really beneath all of that was actually my longing and desire to have more money. But I didn't know how to do it. I, I just did not believe it was possible. And so rather than rewiring myself back then, I was like, oh, money is the root of all evil. And what did that do? It just shackled me to minimum wage jobs that were never going to get me where I wanted to go in life. And so 
The way that I countered that was to bring awareness to these beliefs and that was difficult. It meant I had to stop disliking people and instead get curious. So instead of being angry at people like Elon Musk, I actually looked at people like Elon Musk and thought, well, what do they do to generate that wealth? And then I see, okay, well, they're solving problems and people are paying for those problems to be solved. Is there a way that I can do that? Okay, I understand creative things. Can I help other people that don't understand creative things to understand creative things? Can I do things for them? And this is what led me then to seeing myself in these people that I previously disliked. And so if, if we have different political beliefs from one person to the next, if we can actually put ourselves in their shoes, it doesn't mean we have to agree with them, but we can at least understand. And it's often the things that are like really deep and true to us that hurt the most when people disagree or when they express their distaste toward us. When I started gaining traction online, my initial audience was young men like in their late teens and they were quite rude to me in the comments and they would often make fun of my physical appearance. And while that did hurt a little bit, for the most part, I was able to kind of ignore it because I was like, well, it's so ridiculous. I mean, of course, we all have different preferences as to someone's level of body hair or, you know, the length of their beard or whatever. So, you know, it was easy enough to manage that. But when it comes to like this channel, for example, where I post a lot more thought out and serious topics and I talk about things and I share a lot more about myself, I can get comments from people that completely misunderstand what I've said or misinterpret my intention, which is natural. But it hurts a lot more because I'm like, ah, this is my life's work here. This is my integrity that you're questioning. But then I just remember they are just perceiving it in a certain way. And I am then assuming that is dislike or that is rejection. But it's really just the other person's perception. I could get in the comments and start typing angry things and be like, no, you don't understand. You're an idiot. But there was a mindset shift that I gathered a while back from this guy called Flynn Skidmore. He's a therapist and just a very great speaker. He said, when people get at him in the comments, instead of getting defensive, he gets curious. So he sees, well, what is it that this person is saying about me? Or what is it about their perspective? He goes into it. And so when I got a comment last week, somebody was basically saying something that I disagreed with. And I thought, well, if I was to be curious about this, what would my response be? And instead of being defensive, I said, I just explained a little bit more and we ended up having a nice exchange and it was pleasant and it was lovely. And I felt better. That person felt better. We got to interact. Happy days. There's an interesting paradox. When we stop liking or disliking other people and recognize that it's about our preferences and our experience, it just doesn't mean as much when other people like or dislike you. If people are commenting on all of your stuff or you're getting all of these likes, you notice that it doesn't really satiate you. It doesn't really mean anything. And so long as you put meaning onto it and keep seeking it, you'll end up unfulfilled. And similarly, if there's an absence of it or if there's negative comments or dislikes or whatever, that too will harm you. So, so long as either of them matter to you, you're constantly going to be running toward more likes or you're going to be running away from negative comments. Whereas if you just surrender and accept that most of it's out of your control and it's none of your business, it's just a lot easier to navigate things from a more neutral perspective. And that's tough because it's a lot easier to go about life without changing your beliefs. It's a lot easier to continue seeking external validation. It's a lot easier to not understand other people. But when you take the time to do that, you find an equilibrium, a balance within yourself, which allows you to ultimately attract more of the experiences that you want. And even the ones that come in that you don't want, it doesn't really matter because you have your center. And the more that you try to achieve in this world, the bigger you try to be, the more people are gonna criticize you for that as well because it's hard to understand our belief system is not really empowering in this world. Like we're, we're suppressing a lot of our power and our truth and our authenticity. And when we do that, we're just not actualizing and reaching our potential. And then when we see other people reach their potential, that's going against everything we've been taught because we've been taught to go to school, to go to college, to get a job, to retire at whatever age the retirement age is gonna be. There's no massive achievement to be had there. But then some people, probably like you, have really big goals that are outside of that paradigm. And then when other people that are in that paradigm see us trying to do our thing, it's like, oh, but you can't do that. You need to just accept that and let that go 
and let people think those things about you and do the thing anyway, because that's what you want to do. I'm an artist, but I also consider myself a businessman. And that's very confusing for a lot of people. They don't see how they can intersect. A lot of people dislike me when I have the businessman hat on, when I have money things going on. And then other people, they love me when they perceive me as a starving artist. I put out a video last week. I was expressing myself. It was an artistic piece. The sentiment of the, the piece that I was sharing was that, you know, it was frustration with the, the modern world that we live in and the struggle and the, the emotion. And for me, that was an expression that was an art piece. And it was very much part of my business plan, which is to have people, you know, see my art, to consume my art, to potentially hire me for help with their media and artistic projects and that's cool and that's what i like but then there's kickback because people arguing with me as if to say that i shouldn't be posting things online looking for validation online and these are all you know different perspectives and they're all valid it was kind of triggering for me to be challenged by these people because they were planting seeds whether they consciously intended to do that or not they were planting seeds of doubt in my mind and that's just showing me where i'm at and like my beliefs in those situations i need to either get angry or i need to tap into my compassionate self and see okay what's happening here where are they coming from and that's where this whole video came from was realizing that i'm being misunderstood and that's okay. It's impossible for everybody to understand us as we want to be understood because we're all just viewing the world through our own lens and through our own trauma and through our own past. And that's gonna look and feel different for everybody. And it's not something that we can control. So just let people think the things that they're gonna think about you. And don't be so hard on yourself or them for thinking how they think because we're all doing our best, whether we like to admit that or not. And so for me, the only way is to just be a kind person, be humble, be compassionate, keep learning, commit to learning, commit to a life of learning. Don't commit to being liked. Don't commit to being likable. Just be open, be kind, be compassionate, and always be aware that nothing is permanent in this existence. It's always changing. It's always floating. We're always getting new information new insights, new perspectives, new technology, new this, new that. So don't be getting bogged down whether or not someone likes you or dislikes you. Hope that was helpful for you. There's a newsletter in the description. Sign up. I send out a weekly letter and it might be uplifting and positive for you because it is for all the other many hundreds of people that are on it at this point. Also, my free meditation for confidence is down below. There's also my meditation bundle down there too. I produced all of the tracks on it. It's pretty cool, pretty relaxing. And uh, hope you have a great day. Let me know what's happening in the comments. I appreciate you. Bye.